Hey guys, it's Taniko Pantua, and today I kind of want to talk about animation production on the go. There are times where I have to work overseas temporarily, or I'm taking a vacation, yet I still want to work. Sometimes it can be simple as working at Starbucks. When I talk about animation production on the go, I'm talking about not in your home office or your work desk. But I'm also adding to the criteria that this is a temporary thing. For today, I'll talk about three different approaches that I experienced and how I decided to deal with animation production work on the go. So let's begin. Approach number one, I bought myself a Wacom Mobile Studio. A Wacom Mobile Studio is kind of like a Cintiq, but its own PC. Basically, it's Wacom's tablet PC. The reason I bought it is that I really trust Wacom products and I really like their tools. In fact, the Cintiq 22 HD that I have is seven years old now and it still works really well. So I went ahead and used my savings to purchase the Wacom Mobile Studio. I got myself a 13 inch one because I didn't want anything too big. I got this when I was working for Tonko House off site. One thing I learned is that I fucking hate cabin fever and I need to get my ass out so I can talk to people and see the outside world and eat good food outside. So far I've used it to do animation work and storyboarding work. Because it's just a tablet PC, it's easy to carry around. So when I actually got this for myself, I thought it was the best thing. It's basically a portable Wacom Cintiq and its own PC. However, I don't think Wacom has figured out how to make a decent PC. Well, not yet. Over time, I've noticed so many glitches with the Wacom Mobile Studio. PC related stuff, sometimes the drivers would fail. Sometimes the pen won't even register. And this led me to restarting the tablet a lot. Also, turning on and restarting this PC manually is really weird. To this day, I still don't know how to properly turn on this computer. I'm not sure if I should just flick the switch or if I should hold the switch on. And sometimes it's on standby and sleep mode and I won't even know. However, the most important factor that I kind of have to talk about is that there's so many elements about it that destroy this portability feel for this tablet. So let me explain this. Number one, all the USB ports are type C, which is relatively new at the time I got it. Most of the stuff that I use still use the old USB, so I have to get a bunch of adapters that convert USB type C to normal USB. This involves USB slots, the mouse, uh, hard drives. If you're a TV Paint user, you have to have a USB dongle to activate the program. And with all these conversion adapters, you have so much shit with you. Number two, you do have to get a bunch of necessary accessories for the Wacom tablet. This involves the Wacom stand, which for some reason is its own thing, and the Wacom keyboard, which is also its own thing. The good thing about the keyboard is that it's Bluetooth. The bad thing about it is that the battery does run out pretty fast, and to charge it, you have to connect it to a USB port. But here's the thing, the keyboard still uses an older type of USB, so I have to get another converter or an adapter for it to work with Type-C, the slots that the Wacom Mobile Studio has. So when you do get it set up with your accessories, your keyboard, your stand, uh, your hard drives and all these adapters, it can get really messy. And when you want to work in a place like Starbucks, for example, it kind of does destroy that portability feel. Maybe I would have been better with a Microsoft Surface Pro, but I definitely don't think Wacom is good for building PCs. Yet. So the first option, whether it's a Wacom Mobile Studio or something like the Surface Pro, you can just use a tablet PC, but I would recommend getting a feel of different tablet PCs that work well with you. Option number two, a laptop plus a portable pen display. A pen display is something like the Wacom Cintiq or a Huion pen tablet display. When I talk about portable, I'm really referring to size. Anything that's below 15 to 17 inches. Something that can fit in your backpack. Now, the reason why I did get myself a new laptop is because I wasn't really satisfied with the PC engineering of the Wacom Mobile Studio itself. As for the laptop, I didn't get anything that's too powerful or too much of a gaming PC that looks like a Batman mobile. I wanted something that's decent for the price. I considered the MacBook Pro because I liked how sleek it looks, but it's too expensive for me. So I ended getting myself an Asus ZenBook 15. It has decent specs for what I need. It's got a sleek look and it's super light. It's got a GTX 1050 Max-Q with an i7 processor, along with a terabyte of solid state storage. Another thing I wanted to point out is that I wanted to be sure the laptop had a USB Type-C. Luckily, it has one, and there's a good reason for this. The mobile Cintiq Studio Pro that I have already can act as a normal Cintiq if you connect it to another computer with a USB Type-C. 
This is great because I didn't have to buy a new tablet and I could save money by using my normal mobile studio as a normal Cintiq. I got myself a Thunderbolt cable from Belkin and I connected the USB Type-C slots to each other. I was told to put it in the middle of USB Type-C for the Wacom or else it wouldn't work. Once your computer registers it, make sure you download the drivers for that Wacom Mobile Studio so you can use that as a normal Cintiq on your laptop. And with this setup, not only do I have two computers, but I have a decent PC where I can actually video edit. I can composite and I can multitask, basically bringing a portable version of my work desk. However, I don't see myself using this for places like Starbucks, and that's okay. I'm using this setup mainly for hotel rooms, staying at my family's home or guest room with a place where I can just work and still be able to do full studio work. Gone are the weird Wacom Mobile Studio glitches I had to face and use it for a better PC. Not only that, if I need a break, I can just load up a video game and play a low quality version of it. Oh, also, it's so easy to turn on this laptop. Look, it's just the press of a button, unlike this weird Wacom Switch. So that's my second option and it's definitely an option I'll use long term when I do travel overseas. Option 3, an iPad or any other tablet similar to that. When I want to work at a casual place like Starbucks, I kind of want to have a device that matches that casual vibe. To me, using a full PC didn't do it for me, and I wanted to opt more for a digital sketchbook. I got myself an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil and I love it. It's perfect for working in cafes. The user interface is so easy to access. And if I needed to go on a bathroom break, I could just slip it in my bag without having to unplug everything. There are some animation apps like Rough Animator, which I've animated on. And if I wanted to illustrate or sketch, I use Procreate. When I'm done doing a first pass of the animation, I usually save it as an image sequence and send it over to my PC for further coloring and finalizing. That way, it's easy for me to casually focus on a task. I also use the iPad to write some itineraries, write stories, scripts, project ideas, brainstorming. It's casual, it's a digital sketchbook. And this is what I like to use when I do wanna go draw in more casual places. So those are my three options that I use when I do animation work on the go. So my advice for you is that if you do decide to work on animation productions outside of your home office or your workspace, you want to consider where you'll be working. Is it gonna be at a casual place like a cafe, a restaurant, a Starbucks, a lounge, or are you gonna spend most of your time in a hotel room, in a guest room, uh, in your parents' house, this is something you all have to consider. Another thing to consider is that really research the brands of the hardware that you're going to get. Personally, I sometimes feel I would have been better off with a Microsoft Surface Pro instead of the Wacom Mobile Studio. However, the Mobile Studio does allow itself to be its own tablet, which is pretty cool. As for laptops, I decided to stray away from high-end PCs. Not only is it expensive, but do I really need all the power just for something that's portable and knowing that I have a desktop that I can work with? So if you're like me and already have a desktop PC, look for a laptop that's convenient, not amazing, powerful, or beefy, but just convenient and easy to bring and carry around. If this laptop is gonna be your full-time computer for uh, full-time work and anything else, then by all means, go for it. Get a feel of different PCs, hardwares, and tablets yourself too. I didn't know how much I would appreciate the iPad until I realized how hard and how inefficient it was for me to use a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro at places like Starbucks. When I think of just drawing at Starbucks, I think about just having a digital sketchbook, and that's why I invested in an iPad. So that's all I have to say. Thanks for hearing me out, and I hope you guys figure out a way in how you can make your animation production work on the go. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.